Let me give you a very simple explanation of life insurance, the history behind it, and the three types, term, whole life, and universal life. Let's say that um, we look at a mortality table from the time uh, a baby is born until they finally pass away. And this mortality is measured by the Commissioner's Standard Ordinary Table where they measure the deaths per thousand at every age, starting at age zero uh, up to age 100, 110, 120. We know this, that uh, clear back in 1958, that was a very popular mortality table, that uh, if you took a group of 30-year-olds in America, 1,000 30-year-olds, back then there were 2.13 deaths that year uh, per 1,000 30-year-olds. Uh, and so every year we get older, there's more of the 1,000 people that are dying as you get older because of accidents or illnesses or whatever. So let's simplify this. If we wanted to provide a $1,000 death benefit to help the beneficiaries, uh, the widow, the orphans, of those two out of 1,000 30-year-olds that were going to die that year, uh, and we passed a hat around the room to a, these 1,000 people, how much would everybody put into the hat so we'd have the 2,000 to pay to the two beneficiaries? Well, the answer is two bucks. Everybody chips in two bucks. We now have $2,000. So when the two 30-year-olds die, we have 2,000 to pay out. That's term insurance. Term insurance, the insurance company calculates based upon the mortality table, how many deaths per thousand. As you get older, you have to donate more money to the hat. So pure term insurance goes up in price every year because more and more people are going to be passing away per thousand. By age 65, it used to be that probably a third uh, of uh, American males uh, were pretty much, you know, they had died or they had a, a serious problem. Now, mortality is extending. So term insurance is just the pure cost of insurance. Well, whole life insurance uh, was designed to not have to keep paying higher and higher and higher premiums, what could we pay in a level premium that would cover us for our whole life? And so they would calculate, uh, maybe by uh, age 65 or whatever, uh, well, how much would we need to pay in a level premium? Maybe we might have to pay 10 or 20 times that, but we pay a level premium for our whole life and we give that to the insurance company. They're just like the bank, the hat holding the money and they invest it and they have to keep it safe. And so that is a level premium. So what's happening is you're uh, way overpaying uh, uh, the actual cost or the actual amount you would have to put in that hat uh, in the early years, but you're underpaying the, whoops, you're underpaying the latter years to where uh, what happens after age 65, you keep paying that level premium and uh, you still get covered even though you're not paying near what you should be at that point because you overpaid the early years and that money has accumulated equity or cash value with the insurance company. Now, <clears throat> after just straight whole life was created, a lot of times people said, well, I don't want to pay any more premiums uh, uh, for my whole life. And so what happened is they said, well, pay a little bit more to age 65 and you can stop. And now you've overpaid enough that you don't have to pay any more money. And sometimes, well, how about 20 years, 10 years? What if I just paid one lump sum? How much would I have to pay in one fell swoop to never have to pay another premium? And that is so much money in the insurance company's coffers that the interest on that, based upon your life expectancy, will cover you for your whole life, okay? So that's whole life insurance, and it's based upon how many years of premiums you want to pay in a level amount or a lump sum. Well, <clears throat> back in uh, 1980, uh, E.F. Hutton is actually the brainchild behind the third type of life insurance, universal life. Now, <clears throat> it got its name because it is universally applicable to two different objectives in general. 
One, uh, you could get away with paying a little bit less premium than a lot of whole life back at the time because your rate of return on the insurance uh, cash value was actually a little bit higher than the normal rate of return or interest being credited or dividends in a whole life policy. This was back in 1980. Interest rates were high. And so uh, if you wanted to just have death benefit, you could probably get away, instead of paying this much money, you could pay a little bit less. Or this much money, you could pay a little bit less into a universal life policy because you were earning higher rates of return on the cash value in the insurance policy. So that was a cheaper way to buy death benefit. In actuality, uh, E.F. Hutton originally designed universal life for the other objective, a living benefit. So uh, what they were thinking is, wait a minute here. Because people are taking responsibility and accountability, uh, if they were to die sooner uh, because of an accident or whatever, and they didn't want their uh, widow or, or their children to be orphans relying on you know, social programs and government, the uh, Internal Revenue Code has always allowed the money, this excess money in the insurance policy, to grow tax-free. Why would they want to penalize people who are trying to take ownership and, uh, and, and be self-reliant? So it has been like a sacred cow. So the cash inside of the insurance policy from overpaying the premiums would earn interest or dividends without paying tax. It's one of the very few vehicles in the Internal Revenue Code that allows you to accumulate your money tax-free. And actually, if you needed to, you could access the money tax-free. And when you die, the death benefit, uh, it blossoms in value and transfers tax-free. What E.F. Hutton thought is, wait a minute here. A lot of people were going in here like this last example, and its whole life, they were paying one huge amount of money and uh, they just wanted to have insurance the rest of their life and be done with it. And Hutton said, wait a minute. All that money, however fast you put it in, is tax-free. And you can access it tax-free if you do it the smart way in the Internal Revenue Code. So Hutton said, wait a minute. Why don't we, uh, instead of trying to get the most insurance for the least premium... If we're using it for a living benefit, let's flip it. How about we take the least amount of insurance the IRS will let us get away with, so to speak, and put in the most premium that they will allow, take the least death benefit, put in the most money, and this turns into a tax-free accumulation cash cow. That's the original intent that E.F. Hutton had behind universal life. And even though you can minimum fund it, okay, and usually uh, have a really good rate of return, and it was a little bit cheaper than most whole life policies, even though whole life came out and had to compete and later on uh, had to sort of shape up, universal life could be used to get a really good death benefit for a very affordable premium, or you could do the opposite and take the least amount of life insurance the IRS will let you get away with and put in the most money, and all this money inside the insurance contract would accumulate tax-free, and then you could use it as a living benefit. For example, in 1980, I had many people who would throw in a lump sum, let's say of $500,000, and by doing that, back then, uh, interest rates <laughs> on the universal life was like 11 and three quarters to 15 and a half percent. Because of doing that, many people, I remember, would earn a gross of 11% tax-free interest on their cash in their universal life policy. And uh, on the average, only 1% of that actually paid for that line right there, the actual cost of the chance of you dying. And so what were you netting in this example? Simply 10%. So people were earning a net rate of return within 1% of the gross rate of return. If you earned 8, you'd net 7. If you'd earned 11, you'd net 10. Well, what that did, if you were earning 10, that means this 500,000 in 7.2 years would double in cash value to a million. And if you were really earning 10, you could pull out $100,000 a year out of that million and it would be tax-free for your retirement or for whatever you wanted. So E.F. Hutton was thinking... 
why are we trying to have people just buy term insurance and invest the difference in mutual funds when a 12% yielding mutual fund, really you have to pay tax of 25 or 33% on that. You're earning 12 and netting eight. An insurance contract back in 1980, you could earn 11 and net 10. And because it's tax free, you could outperform even their mutual fund portfolios paying higher interest but it was taxable or just tax deferred. And that is why Universal Life came out. So the three, term insurance is the pure cost of insurance. That term component is in all types of insurance. Whole life insurance has a term component in it. You're just overpaying the early years so you can underpay or not pay in the latter years. Universal Life can be designed the same way. You can minimum fund it or you can maximum fund it. But generally speaking, Universal Life was designed uh, for those people who wanted to use it both for living benefits, tax-free accumulation, and tax-free cash flow, accessing the money tax-free, and then when you ultimately died, it would blossom in value, meaning whatever was in there would increase in value and pay out tax-free. These are actually in three sections of the Internal Revenue Code, Section 72E, allows you to accumulate the money tax-free. 7702 allows you to access the money tax-free. Section 101A means that whatever is left in there will actually blossom and transfer income tax-free in a death benefit. So those are the three basic types of life insurance. In other educational videos, you can learn about all kinds of options like fixed and uh, uh, indexed and variable life and whole life has all kinds of different options too but those are the three basics and hopefully this will help you understand how they are priced and how you can put in more funding or overfund them or you can minimum fund them based upon your objectives.